Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. This is Dennis Prager's house, Dennis Prager's fireplace, Dennis Prager's dog. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the reason I'm laughing is that Otto, my bulldog, is um, is prone to snoring while I speak. So should you hear that in the background, you will have a debate. Is it because I'm not interesting or Otto just wants to somehow get onto one of these podcasts? But it, it, it is a challenge to speak next to him, but... If you ever try to move a bulldog, you will understand why they're called bulldogs. All right. Anyway, it's great to be with you. Here's the story about my uh, fireside chats, which take place virtually every week from my home. It's completely spontaneous. I just offer you some thoughts, then I take your questions. It's a way to speak to you without any notes, without any... Any, what, what else is there that people have? Any advanced, even no makeup. <laughs> it's just you and me. All right, anyway, great to be with you. And I want to talk to you about the Jussie Smollett story. Now, here's a very important thing that you have to know about these podcasts or broadcasts or video casts or fireside chats. If I do do a, an item in the news, the ideas that I extrapolate from them and want to offer to you are unlimited in time. The event might be specific to the moment, but the ideas transcend the moment. So you could watch this a year from now, and I would hope it would be just as important and relevant as it is, even though we're in a sort of breaking news cycle. So here's the story. This man, whom I frankly had never heard of before, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm just noting it. This man who is black and gay and a comedian, he said that in Chicago one night when it was about 20 below zero, or at least windchill factor 20 below or something like that, uh, he was attacked at 2 a.m. Or, or about that time by two men, and they were whites who were screaming racist and homophobic slogans at him and beat him. There were a lot of questions from the beginning, and on my radio show, I'm very, very, very careful about uh, truth. Truth is the, the most precious thing in some ways that we humans have. L lies uh, always lead to evil. So it, it's, uh, in other words, big lies. I don't, I don't mean... You know, if you exaggerate, even though it's not good to exaggerate. But I've been on radio for over 30 years, and I took a vow to myself when I began radio, I won't even exaggerate. I wanted a, a name, even among those who differed with me, of, well, you may disagree with everything Prager says, but uh, you, you will know that to the best of his ability, he checked the facts. And if I ever get even a, a fact wrong, I try to announce it immediately because there are so many people correcting me <laughs> at any given time. All right. So, uh, but nevertheless, at the beginning of this attack, when, when it became known, it seemed a bit odd to me in many ways. It seemed odd to many people. I was not alone. And I said, look, I have no idea, obviously, what happened, but uh, there are questions that need to be answered. And it turns out that the two men that allegedly attacked uh, Jussie Smollett were, in fact, people he knew. They were brothers. They were not only not white, they were black. They were from Nigeria, the West African uh, country. And they flew back to Nigeria right after the uh, alleged attack, which they were paid to, uh, uh, in, in, apparently, they claim... And I don't know why they would lie. Uh, they they claim that they were paid to do this thirty five hundred dollars, be given a five hundred dollar bonus afterwards. Uh, they the police apparently have, according to reports, have receipts for a noose, for bleach, uh, for a, a red hat. Uh, so uh, it, it seems pretty slam dunk at this time. At any rate, anything could come out, but it seems slam dunk that uh, he made up this attack. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that I, I had reason to believe from the beginning, aside from evidence that seemed a bit contradictory to what he said, was that there were so many hoaxes involved in uh, attacks on blacks 
and, and nooses and swastikas and the like. There were so many of them, and there have been so many in the last few years that it, it, it just wouldn't surprise me. And uh, you can actually go on the internet. There is a website. What, what is the name of this website? There's a whole website. I, I don't know anything about it. It's called fakehatecrimes.org. And it, it gives you the background. In each case, you could press on it and see the press report uh, uh, delineating the, uh, the report. Just, I mean, the, the number of examples uh, are legion. A few years ago at Duke University... Uh, the entire Duke campus, including its president, condemned the Duke lacrosse team, which was essentially white males, of gang raping a black woman. And uh, they all spoke about how much racism there is on, uh, on the Duke campus and the usual stuff that comes from the university, which uh, has been ruined by uh, the left. And by the way, I am not the only one to say that. In other words, not only conservatives say that. Uh, Steven Pinker, professor at Harvard, atheist, liberal, uh, says that the the left has rendered the university a laughing stock. The university, the only reason it's not a laughing stock is that there's nothing to laugh about. Uh, that you are uh, being ripped off if you're paying uh, money to go to college. It's in the liberal arts uh, or uh, in anything except you know the natural sciences and math uh, is uh, almost uh, a given. Not all teachers. Uh, are uh, fraudulent in what they're uh, giving you if you're at college, but many are. This was true in my time. This is not new. It's just gotten worse. I couldn't. Be- I can't believe it got worse because when I was a kid, it was awful, and and it's just gotten worse. So anyway, at Duke, this was a scandal. The national media went crazy about racism, racism, campus racism, campus racism. Duke is racist. The lacrosse players are racist. Their lives were essentially ruined, and it co- came out to be an entire hoax. Uh, the, the number of these things that turn out to be different than the press reported them originally uh, is is uh, is a national scandal, but who's going to report the scandal? The press? Are they going to say to you, you know, the truth is, we don't tell you much truth. We tell you what, you what we want you to believe so that we can undermine conservatives in the United States and undermine the United States. We want to promote the idea that this country is filled with hate, and we will therefore send you everything. For example, uh, there was a guy named, uh, what was it, um, Omar Martin, was that it? What was the guy's name? Omar Martin. Yeah, Omar Martin, Martin, not Martin. Yeah, Martin, uh, this, uh, this terrible human being who shot up a gay uh, club uh, in, uh, in Orlando, Florida a few years ago. The entire report was, of course, that this is an example, just like uh, the uh, Smollett story is an example of racism, this was an example of American homophobia, hate, hatred of homosexuals. That's what, or fear of homosexuals, literally, what homophobia means. Anyway, it, it actually turns out, and I don't know if, how many of you even know this? Because you have to read a lot of things to find this out. It turns out the guy didn't even know the club was gay. He was just, he was a mass murderer. And why he was a mass murderer is a separate issue, but it had nothing to do with their being gays. Likewise, the most famous homophobic quote-unquote, murder in American history, perhaps. Uh, Matthew Shepard in Wyoming, uh, where he was, a, uh, he was uh, tortured and on horribly murders. A horrible, obviously, it's evil no matter what the circumstance, but it turns out that wasn't homophobia either, that it was, in fact, a drug deal gone bad. And uh, apparently, uh, he, he may have known intimately one of the two men uh, who uh, was involved in his murder. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this is widely understood, a, 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 um, a Hispanic American gay journalist is the one who did years of research and, uh, and, uh, and police officials confirmed the validity of his, uh, of his report. So that turns out not to have been homophobia, neither was the, uh, neither was the attack on uh, the uh, nightclub in Orlando. Uh, it's one after another a hoax. The reason that the media jump on board and make national proclamations based on often based on nothing is that they want to perpetuate the belief that America is a homophobic, racist, bigoted, sexist, is Islamophobic society. 
in the history of human uh, recorded history i can't speak of non-recorded hu- recorded human history i don't know of a society in which so much good takes place and a it's elite wish to tear it down like the united states of america it is it may be unprecedented in recorded history this is one of the kindest most decent countries in the world the least amount of homophobia the least amount of sexism the least amount of racism and it is called evil every day by the left which remember if you know one thing about modern life all you need to know is everything the left touches it ruins from the arts to the universities to high schools to race relations to uh to the boy scouts it's it's uh, simply endless everything the left touches it is a it's like a shark it's an eating machine it just devours things and this uh it, it is its ultimate aim is to uh undo america uh, barack obama said this i've quoted this so often i know it by heart five days before his first election as president in 2008 we are five days away from fun, uh, from fundamentally transforming the united states of america fundamentally transforming you remember anything you respect you don't want to fundamentally transform anything you love you don't want to fundamentally transform only things you have contempt for do you want to fundamentally transform the left has contempt for America throughout the world. The American left is, 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 does too. Not, not liberals, but leftists. Liberals are just weak in their, in their non-confrontation of the left. There are a few liberals who do, like the aforementioned Steven Pinker and uh, the professor of law at uh, Harvard University, Alan Dershowitz. These are liberals who do understand the threat that the left uh, constitutes but they're they're pretty rare liberals still think their enemy is conservatives when their enemy uh, is in fact the left so the latest one is another example we're going to show you how racist america is look at what happened and homophobic oh so you get a you get a double whammy here because he's gay and black and it turns out probably to be a hoax uh the uh i i gave you the the uh, the duke example of another uh, hoax about racism permeating duke university hundreds of professors signed a petition about racism at at duke and it turns out uh, that in fact eh, it was a hoax did that by the way did any of these professors apologize i doubt it i doubt it i i kept looking maybe some did i am unaware of any the New York Times led this massive crusade about racism on campus. Did it apologize? I don't know. Remember, there's another motto I have. I coined this 25 years ago. Being on the left means never having to say you're sorry. It's taken from the movie Love Story from many, many years ago. It's a movie Love Story, and its, its meme or motto or slogan was, being in love means never having to say you're sorry. And, uh, of course, that's pretty stupid. Being in love means having to say you're sorry. It was a stupid slogan, but I got the idea about the left from Love Story. This happens, this is, it's continuous. There were nooses up in Jackson, Mississippi, right before uh, last year's runoff Senate election. And they were, they were put up, and of course, nooses put up in Jackson. Mississippi's a racist state. Uh, this is why you have to vote for the Democrat, because we have to fight all this racism. And a few days later, it, was, it came out, a Democrat put the nooses up to try to get more votes out for the Democrat. It's, this is so common. I, I now, my assumption is in that unless it's clear and obvious that wherever you have this report, it's a hoax. More often than not in these cases, we're talking about hoaxes. Remember, uh, you may not even know this, but there were, uh, there were hundreds of Jewish community centers that had uh, bomb threats flown into them for a number of years, including the first uh, year of the, of the Trump administration. And that was evidence, oh, so much anti-Semitism in America. Well, it turned out it was a Jewish kid. It wasn't a hoax. Well, I guess it was a hoax, but in any event, it was a Jewish kid, American Jewish kid, who was nuts. Just the, the kid is, is, is mentally disturbed, living in Israel, calling up Jewish community centers uh, with bomb threats. Uh, so it had nothing to do with American anti-Semitism. America is a good country. 
and it is angering to see goodness defamed, which is all the left does. And if you are a young person, you are being lied to by your elders if they tell you America is racist, America is sexist, America is anti-Semitic, America is homophobic. It is a pure lie. It is one of the greatest lies in the history of the Western world. And I, I know about these lies. I wrote, a, I wrote a major book on anti-Semitism called Why the Jews, and it has a whole chapter on libels against Jews, like Jews would kill Christian kids to use their blood to make the unleavened bread for Passover called matzah. It, and Jews were killed based on that lie. So I know about libels. This is a libel that America is racist and sexist and so on. Are there racists in America? Of course there are. It's a stupid question. There are racists everywhere. There are bad people everywhere. But that you don't judge a society based on a handful of people who are awful or a handful of people who are good. There were good people in Nazi Germany, but Nazi Germany was evil. There are bad people in America, but America is good. Unless the, the, the left ruins it, which is very, very possible. It's easy to tear down good things. The left, is, the left is, uh, has great experience in doing that. This is all vile stuff. One after another, hoax after hoax after hoax. And you know why? Now, why is that? There was, I was just reading from this website that I mentioned to you. I remember this story about, uh, about uh, swastikas on, on black dorm rooms and so on. It was a black kid who did it. it. And so often, whenever I now hear about a swastika on, on, a, on, a, on a black kid's a dorm room or a Jewish kid's dorm room, I assume that it was not an anti-Semite who did it, but that it was somebody who wanted to show that anti-Semitism and racism are real, that, you know, to show how bad the campus is. And that's the way it turns out. This was a black kid who painted the swastikas. Over and over. But no, nobody, nobody learns from the last lesson. But why do they do it? Here's a question. If America is so racist and blacks are being beaten by, by white supremacists so often, why would anybody have to fake it? Right? Just rely on it happening. Because it happens so rarely, they have to fake it. That's the point. That's why there are all the hoaxes. Because real life swastika daubing by 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 uh, by anti-black racist is so rare they've got to do it on their own that's how that's that's the reason that's the, it's the ultimate compliment to america that you need hoaxes believe me you didn't need anti-semitic hoaxes in nazi germany they had the real thing you didn't need anti-black stuff in 1920s america you didn't need a hoax there was unfortunately a real thing called lynching but not in America today. Not just not lynching. Not even this stuff. Does it ever happen? Yes, everything happens. There's no such thing as, as something never happens. It's like, oh, and, and of course, campuses are, uh, are rape cultures, to which I have a very simple question. You should ask anybody who says that, uh, that college is, is a rape culture. You should ask one simple question of them. Why, would, why did you send your daughter there? You got to be a pretty crappy parent to send your daughter to a rape culture. So either you're lying about it being a rape culture or you don't give a damn about your daughter. There is no other possible explanation for sending your daughter to a rape culture. Everything about the left is a fraud. Everything. It's mind-boggling. It's hard to believe. That's why they don't want us to speak on campuses. They know that one and a half hours 90 minutes with someone like me, or Ben Shapiro, or Victor Davis Hanson, or, or uh, Heather McDonald, or, or, or uh, so many others. I mean, just off the top of my head. Uh, or or, or who, who's the terrific guy from Canada? Jordan the, Peterson. Yeah, uh, Jordan Peterson. They, they are afraid to have us for good reason. 90 minutes of truth undoes four years of lies. That's the beauty of it. By the way, you should all watch. I just spoke at the University of California at Irvine. There are so many uh, videos of mine up on the internet of my college lectures, University of Wyoming, Colorado State University, uh, and uh, by the Columbia did not allow it. So interesting. Columbia did not allow it to be videoed. 
The more prestigious the college, the more closed it is. Just know that. Columbia is an intellectual wasteland. I went there. It was getting to be a wasteland when I was there. It is a total wasteland to lay intellectually. Are there some good professors? As I said, there are good people everywhere, but they're irrelevant to the larger picture. This is really sad. It, the treating goodness, defaming a good place is a sin of colossal proportions. America's a good place. And the left has this mortal sin of bad mouthing, but it's good. Why do they do it? Ah, that's a very complex question. They do it in part, is a very complex question, in part because they need a, they need purpose in life. The combination of the dereligionization or secularization of society and an affluent society has produced a lot of bored people with no purpose. See, if you're very poor, you have a purpose. You have to, you, you got to make money for, for dinner. But if you're wealthy, you need another purpose other than making money. And, and almost everybody in, in the, on the left has, has some wealth. No, they're, not, they're not millionaires. Wealth means you have a home, you have a car, you, you can take care of yourself, you can eat out as people do. See? So uh, they're bored. They need purpose. <laughs> uh, what, uh, Alexandria Octavio, uh, 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 right? No, Ocasio Cortez, yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's, she's a perfect example of this. It's wonderful that we will not have Amazon in New York City. Why would we want to give 25,000 people jobs and, and billions of dollars in income to our state? The guy's a billionaire. Why would we want to do that? It just makes him more money. They don't care if people are helped. They care if people are rich. That's the left. What happened in New York is like perfect, perfect to tell you what the left is like. It just knows how to destroy. They build nothing they, except bigger government. They build nothing. This was, this was pr precious because Bezos is on the left. When the left eats up the left, it's really something to watch. He was outlefted, as it were. Anyway, hoaxes and hoaxes and hoaxes and hoaxes, and nobody learns. Yeah, and, it, and it's barely reported. Barely reported. How many of you know knew about the Matthew Shepard case, or the case of the of the uh, Orlando bar, or the Duke University case? These were gigantic things. The media had field days telling us how disgusting America is. Okay, some thoughts on that. I do get passionate on it because I feel like they're bullies. I know it's odd to say picking on America, but yeah, that's really what's being done. Okay, time for your questions. How long was that? 23. Really? Wow. I really spoke for long. Hmm. Okay. All right, what am I going to do? Uh, Trey, 26, Arkansas. Hello, Mr. Prager. How do we go about improving education in this country? By removing ourselves from the institutions that are indoctrinating rather than educating. That's the only way right now. I have given up on them. You're sending your child to a school that teaches kids in, in first grade that there were no boys or girls. They'll decide whether they're a boy or a girl later or even neither. Why you would send your child to a school that tells your, your, your girl that she's not a girl, that she may not be a girl, that one day she may be a boy, she may be a girl, she may alternate. Why you would do that is a puzzle to me. I wouldn't. Okay? So you have, uh, you have religious Christian and Jewish schools. That is a possibility, but I mean religious ones. Some Jewish and Christian schools are as leftist as, as public schools. They just have uh, some... Uh, religious study thrown in for, for uh, edification. But uh, that's, that's one possibility. If your local school is terrific and actually teaches rather than indoctrinates, absolutely support it. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the, more, uh, the only way to stop this is to stop the flow of money into the schools, including college. If you don't have to go to college, uh, there is no reason to go to college. Who has to go to college? 
a handful of people. It is very hard to study medicine on your own. <laughs> I fully acknowledge that. Or physics or math. I get it. Uh, but for almost anything else, save the money, hire a tutor. There are a lot of bright uh, people, who, former teachers and scholars, who would love uh, one-tenth of that money and to come privately and tutor you. You want to study, uh, you want to study Russian or Arabic or, or Japanese or Chinese? Get a private tutor. It's much better than a classroom anyway, at one one hundredth the cost. So uh, uh, unless you you know you, you're just crazy about the college experience, which fine, I understand that. Uh, there is absolutely no reason to uh, fund uh, the institutions that have contempt for this country and for for truth. They have contempt for excellence. They tear down Shakespeare's uh, picture at the University of Pennsylvania English Department because he's white European male. But his picture wasn't up there because he was a white European male. His picture was up there because he wrote the best plays in the English language. That's why. You have to understand, you go to college, there's a very good chance you will become stupid as a result. I mean that literally. You'll become less mature, less wise, and less intellectually uh, 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 able than when you entered. So by going to these, you asked how to improve education, that's how. Don't fund them. That's how. I'm sorry it's come to this. I really do believe, by the way, I'm telling you, if somebody, if, so, if, if, a, if a, an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old watched all 400 Prager University videos, read the, the uh, appended readings that we have, watched them again because they're very dense, they're entertaining but they're dense, there's a lot of information in those 750 words, and learn them well, you would become so much wiser and intellectually alive than almost anyone going to college. Okay? I say this with total seriousness. As Bill Bennett's sa his son said to me when we had far fewer videos up, he's learned more at Prager University than at Princeton University. That's so, um, and, that, and obviously there's so much more you could learn on the internet or with private instructors. Work. Uh, I mean, there are so many alternatives uh, and to making a, a, a good life for yourself. Uh, it, it means nothing to any... We all know it means nothing if you went to college. It means nothing. Nobody's impressed. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Okay? Let's be honest. An idiot can get a BA. In fact, it helps if you're an idiot. Because then you will have believed what you were told and answered the questions the way the instructor wants. It means nothing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have one. It doesn't mean a thing. I went to graduate school at Columbia University. So what? Do any of you know that? Do any of you care? Do you know the only question I was never asked in 30 plus years of radio? People have asked me everything about my, my own life, about everything in life. Not one person ever called to ask me what college I went to because nobody cares. Either I'm intelligent and have something to say or I'm not intelligent and have nothing to say but it has nothing to do with where I went to college or if I, if I went to college. Let us say I announced, ladies and gentlemen, truth is... I, I, uh, I, I dropped out of college, or I, I actually never went to college. I'm self-taught. People are great. So what? I'm self-taught in conducting. I've conducted orchestras. You, you could self-teach a lot. Hmm. Well, this is a wise guy thing. It turns when I turn. Uh, Savannah, 14, Utah. Great, Savannah. How can you stand up for your values and not be offensive? The, my trick, or a trick, is to adopt my motto. I prefer clarity to agreement. Don't try to win an argument. Just try to establish where you and the person you're talking to differ. That's all. So, le so let me understand. You could say to somebody, so this is what you're saying and this is what I'm saying. Are we in agreement that that is what we are each saying? Okay, I don't want to win an argument. I just want to establish where we differ. You think that socialism is better for people, even though you do acknowledge that the only thing that ever lifted billions of humans out of poverty is capitalism. Do we at least agree on that? I mean, not... I, 
And that's all I want to know. Do we agree on that? If Look, if we don't agree on basic facts, if you don't think the Earth is round, then it's silly to have an argument about astronomy. So if you don't understand the basic fact that the only system, economic system, to ever lift people out of poverty has been capitalism, that socialism is uses the money socialism makes to spend on itself, then uh, obviously then, then, then an argument is irrelevant. Once you argue over facts, you can argue over opinions, but you can't argue over facts. So you just establish uh, what, what it is that uh, where it is you differ and say it with a smile and be sweet. And I mean it, be sweet and, and smile. I'm not, being, I'm not being cute. Here, look. Smile. No, 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 that was a phony smile. But uh, give a real smile. Okay, how are we doing on time? 30. Really? Should I do one more? Sure. Uh, Kassian. Ah, Lower Saxony in Germany. Does Europe have a future? Hey, I got to talk about Kassian. I know this Kassian. How many Kassians are in Lower uh, Saxony, Germany? Is Kassian 25? Is that old? Wow. Whew. Kassian has a YouTube channel which I'm going to bring to your attention because he is doing great work in Europe. Does Europe have a future? Uh, look, I have an interesting way of answering that. Why was Europe great with all its flaws? And it had terrible flaws. Well, why was it great? Because it was rooted in certain basic principles. Specifically, the, the, it was a continent that was rooted in what we call in America Judeo-Christian principles, right? That the Bible was its primary text. Every European knew the Bible. They used the Bible. The, the greatest writers used it constantly. Uh, Churchill, who was an, uh, probably an agnostic, constantly quoted the Bible. It's gone. It's gone. So what is left? Uh, uh, another one was a belief in itself, a belief that Western civilization was was superior in certain ways. Women's rights, democracy, human rights, the arts. But if you don't believe that that's true anymore, why bother surviving? So the question is not, <laughs> does Europe have a future? It doesn't want the future. That's the point. It sees no need for a European future. Let's bring in millions of people who don't share our values, because we don't share our values. The reason it doesn't trouble most Europeans to bring in millions of people who don't share a Western values is that they don't share Western values, so they're kindred spirits. That's the reason that they have no problem bringing them in. There's no value system to protect, so why not bring in anybody? All right, everybody, let me remind you, Prager you videos. What else can I remind you? Oh, yes. If you want to know what, we, what all this is based on, please read my book, The Rational Bible. It's going to be five volumes. The second volume is about to come out in three months. The first volume came out explaining the Bible in purely rational terms. If you're an agnostic, if you are a, a rural resident of, of Japan, it doesn't matter. This is meant to give you what college doesn't, and that's wisdom. And it's fun to read as well. And I think that's about it. I know I went over time, didn't I? Was it 36.2 minutes? How long? 33. Oh, 33. That's not bad. 34. On behalf of my dogs and everybody else in the room, it is great to be with you. I watch the videos. They're very they're, they're good to watch, these uh, the talks that I give at colleges, to give you an idea in much longer uh, time period than one of these, uh, well, not much longer, three times longer, uh, what, uh, what I stand for and what I, I think is worth your time. Thanks for being with me. I'm Dennis Prager. See you next week. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to keep these fireside chats free, please do by donating to PragerU.